just dying. There is so much snow on the ground right now. And it's so dry in our apartment that like my throat just refuses to work. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is a recommendations video. So this type of recommendations video, if you like this, then you should read this, has been going around booktube for many, many years. I've always wanted to do a recommendations video like this, and I do see a lot of very similar themes and ideas between books, but I am finally going to do one today. So let's jump right into it. The first coupling that I'm going to mention is if you liked Finlay Donovan is Killing It, then you should probably read Dial A for Aunties. So both of these books are actually books in a series. They have at least one other book. Finlay Donovan is Killing It. The third one is being awaited by fans such as myself. And Dial A for Aunties just had a sequel and I loved them all. So they both kind of follow this unintentional murder but with mystery. So Finlay Donovan is a writer and she just went through a nasty divorce with her husband and is trying to take custody of her kids and she is a writer. She writes mystery romance and she one day is overheard talking to her agent in a Panera and the person who overhears thinks she's actually a hitman so she decides to hire Finlay to do a job. While Dial A for Aunties follows our main character who is a photographer, a wedding photographer for the wedding business that her and her four aunties kind of put on together. Each auntie um, specializes in some different elements of preparing for a wedding and she gets set up on a date and that date goes horribly wrong and she unintentionally ends up killing her date. And so her and her aunties have to figure out what to do with the body and how to get everyone off their trail while also putting on a wedding. So you can see where the similarity lies in that they're both normal people who did not intend to do something wrong, like murder, but then it just kind of happened and now they have to go through this long, comedic, and kind of mysterious way of dealing with these effects. The second coupling that I would like to mention is a little bit more on the sea side of things. If you have read Daughter of the Pirate King, the duology by Trisha Levenseller, I think you would enjoy Jack the Jackie Faber series. Jackie Faber, I think, is a slightly younger audience. I'm not sure if it was like middle grade or YA, but they both deal with a powerful woman pirate going on adventures and whatnot and it's just so fun to read about so I think if you enjoyed one of these then you should definitely read the other. Uh, I will say they both have great romance plots. Um, Daughter of the Pirate King is just a duology so your romance happens a lot faster and the banter is phenomenal versus Jackie Faber. She actually is someone who dresses up as a boy for quite a bit of her pirate career before she's found out to be a woman and then the romance kind of gets going but it's a nice long series that'll they'll just make you laugh but also entertain you the whole way through. Next if you have read An Enchantment of Ravens I would suggest you read Autumn's Tithe. So these are both heavily autumn-themed fae books. They are perfect for November, if you are still in the autumn mood for November. So An Enchantment of Ravens features a human who is really good at painting portraits, especially of the fae. And so one day she is visited by the Autumn Prince to paint his portrait, except she does the horrible, horrible misstep of painting him with a little bit of emotion. So then she has to go all through the Fae Realm and answer for her crimes, blah blah blah, etc. and so forth. This is a fantasy standalone and I adored this book. So if you've read it or that sounds interesting, you should also check out Autumn's Tithe. This book 
also features the autumn kind of prints in a way in terms of the bay world but our main character here every year the autumn prince comes to take a young woman to be like the tribute to complete some mysterious task and they are told that the the person who is chosen will lead a beautiful and luxurious life in the fey world after that and her family is heavily compensated our main character's best friend is taken one year and so the next year she really wants to be taken so that she can see her friend again and she doesn't get chosen but she does find herself ending up in the fey world anyway and she learns there is so much more to this story than anyone had ever realized again both very it's the autumnal prince and human love story fey vibes i thought they were just absolutely perfect and the sequel to autumn's tithe autumn's traitor is about to come out i believe it comes out early december and i am so excited to read it i cannot wait to get my hands on copies of all three of these books really next up is a book that i've talked about on my channel quite a bit if you have read girl serpent thorn by melissa bachardoust you should read this vicious grace so girl serpent thorn is kind of a sleeping beauty retelling along with a bunch of other things all jumbled together including persian mythology our main character is poisonous to the touch. People and animals cannot touch her, or they will die, and that's not great. And so she really wants to go to her brother's wedding. Uh, there's this whole political plot happening and whatnot. So if you have read this or you are interested in reading this, I would also recommend This Vicious Grace. So This Vicious Grace has a very similar premise in terms of our main character, the Finestra cannot really touch people because she will kill them. So this is an Italian-based fantasy where it's kind of in this fantasy world of Italy and Italian is like the old language, but our Finestra, our main character, has to find her match because every 10 years, 100 years, there is an invasion of these demonistic creatures or demonic creatures that come and invade the land and she is the only one who can amplify another person's magical ability strong enough so that they can defeat these creatures and they believed that there are is a set of gods there's the god of chaos and then there's the goddess who they all love and so she needs to find her partner to amplify their power in order to defeat these creatures. And the way that they do that is through touch, except if she kills everybody she touches, she is not finding her one true partner who won't die when she touches them. So, yes, there is romance in these books. There is lots of political intrigue and various like longing for human contact in these books. And so I would highly recommend both of them. The next pairing has to do a little bit more on the autumn cozy side of things with werewolves and just forest vibes and a little bit of magic. And that would be For the Wolf, of course, by Hannah Witten because I've been obsessed with this book. Again, I've talked about it so much on this channel and I finally finished the sequel for The Throne. But if you have taken my recommendation to read this book and you're looking for something else to read, I would recommend Red Wolf. This is by Rachel Vincent. Obviously these books look pretty similar with them both having our main character in a red cloak, very Little Red Riding Hood vibes. This one is much more of a stronger retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. You've got your main character who lives with her mom and her sister in a little town and they are bakers and they are baking bread and that alone is just warm cozy vibes. And she has to go to her grandmother's house to give her some bread and there is a bit of a love triangle but I didn't hate it and the romance is just so sweet and she learns a family secret and in this one for the wolf there is a wolfish creature that lives in the woods that the society believes that when the queen has twin daughters one must be to become the next queen and the other must be a sacrifice to the wolf in the woods in order to keep chaos from raining down in their town. So this is much darker than For the Wolf. This is much more lighter, cozy autumnal. This is like 
dark blood magic. Cozy autumnal, I would say, still. And this is part of a duology, as I mentioned, versus this is a standalone. But if you need the wolfy vibes, they're right here. The final coupling that I have here are much more of the darker gothic romance, but also murder mystery, just various ties together. So if you loved reading Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco, or even if you read her other series but haven't read this one, I would highly recommend this one. I'm currently about to finish the fourth book and the final book in the series. So this has our main character who wants to, who uses studying dead bodies to solve murder. Each book follows a different mysterious kind of murderer through history. So the first one is Stalking Jack the Ripper, and then we approach Dracula and Houdini and now the devil. So if you enjoy solving mysteries through dead bodies with a female character in the 1800s, you should read this, but you should also read Anatomy, a love story by Dana Schwartz. This is much more your gothic romance. So both of these have phenomenal romance plot lines, if I do say so myself. This it stretches out through the four books in the series and is so good. The banter is amazing versus this is a standalone gothic romance. But again, we have a female. She is actually in Edinburgh and she wants to study dead bodies again, but she can't because she's a woman in 1800s. She can't do anything, basically. She, the professor of a class that she really wants to take says, if you can pass the exam, I will let you into my class. And this has a much more eerie, like, scientific advancements are happening and she wants to get in on that. So she finds an illegal grave digger to help her dig up bodies to study in order to prepare for the exam. Again, so good. Dark, spooky vibes for both of these romance women in the 1800s studying dead bodies. Seriously, it is such a wonderful... I've said vibes so many times in this video, but honestly, the atmosphere, the darkness, like, it's there. You will just fly through these books if they sound interesting to you. Unfortunately, this is a standalone, but it does have quite a bit of an ambiguous ending. But, oh my word. These are my latest obsessions. I will tell you that. So those are all of the bookish recommendations I have for you today. If you have read any of them and agree to my recommendation for its pairing, or you have your own set of pairings that you think, if I read one, I should read the other, or just any recommendations, I would love to hear them down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And also let me know if you want to make more videos like this. There are definitely more books that are very connected that would go well together. Also feel free to subscribe. I post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays, but as the end of the year is coming up, I will probably be posting bonus videos quite a bit throughout the month of December and January. So make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell to be notified when a bonus video goes up. Otherwise, I also have bookish social media linked down below that you can click on and follow me there, see what I'm reading, see what I'm thinking about it and get other various bookish updates from me. But until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.